Raditz was waiting on the beach near the blood fountain in hell. He was anxious. He was with his father, talking about their past, before he suddenly told him that he needed to go somewhere. Bardock told his eldest son that he'd come back this time. While he waited, Raditz thought back to the past, to his childhood. He never got to be much with his parents, especially Barda, who was always away on missions. Raditz respected his father, and he looked up to him, viewing him as an example of what a true Saiyan should be, a warrior who never gives up and fights with everything he has. He recalls his mother, Gine, a kind, doting Saiyan that was very different from the others. As a kid, Raditz always tried to get away from his mother, since he didn't want her acts of kindness and cuddling to make him soft. However, looking back, he recognizes that he actually enjoyed his time with her. As Raditz dwelt on his thoughts, a figure approached in front of him. It was his father, Bardock. Raditz asked where the hell he went, and he chuckles. He said that he had a front row seat to Kakarot's battle against Nappa and Vegeta. Raditz puts up his bravado, asking smugly how quickly Kakarot got killed before getting sent back to the other world. Bardock smirked as he proudly tells his son that Kakarot defeated not only Nappa, but Vegeta as well. Raditz's jaw dropped. The last time he met his youngest brother, he fought him alongside his father in Yama's forest. Although he reluctantly agreed that Kakarot had gotten stronger since their first battle, he just couldn't believe that he would have been able to destroy those Saiyans. Bardock said that, It looks like Kakarot, no, Goku was right. It doesn't matter where you start or which class you're born into, as long as you train hard, you can become as strong as you want. Why don't we follow his example and get stronger together, son? Bardock holds out his hand. Raditz looked at his father as his emotions started to swell. After struggling for so long to try to survive in the universe, with Vegeta and Nappa constantly berating him and beating him, he had always secretly wished to meet his parents again. To know what it felt like to not be mocked or treated like garbage. To feel acknowledged. To be loved. Raditz tears up a little bit in that moment, as he asks his father if he's sure. Compared to the other Saiyans, he's just a weakling. Bardock ruffles his hair and tells him, of course, that's something they can easily fix. Raditz smiles for the first time in many, many years, as he gladly accepts. Bardock and Raditz's adventures in hell will be tough, but before then, only around 35% of watchers are subscribed, so don't forget to click that subscribe button so you never miss videos in the future. For the next few weeks, Bardock trains together with his son as he continues to maintain his duties as protector of hell. Although Raditz was frustrated with his slow progress, Bardock always encouraged him to keep going and believe in himself. Raditz eventually starts started to show some incredible growth in power, which made his father and himself very proud. Even Bardock was starting to become stronger as a result of the constant training. When it came time to protect Hell, the most Bardock had to do was beat some sense into demons or spirits that had bright ideas about causing problems there. This was a pretty rare occurrence, and he spent most of his time sparring with Raditz or enjoying the scenery with his son on their favorite bench. However, their strength would soon be put to the test. One day, while they were training in the Yama Forest, a a massive explosion sounded off in the distance. The entire forest shook with birds, and creatures scattered away. Raditz wondered what in the world this could be, as Bardock gritted his teeth. That explosion sounded like it came from the bloody pond. Bardock told his son to follow him, and the pair flew back to their usual spot. Once they arrived, they saw, to their horror, many defeated Oni lying motionless on the ground. Goss was weakly trying to stand back up as a hulking figure grabbed Mess by the throat. His laugh echoed in the park as Raditz started to shake in fear. No, he recognized that laugh. It couldn't be. Nappa had finally arrived. Nappa <laughs> said, <laughs> Well, if it isn't Raditz the run. Fancy meeting you here. Hell sure is full of weaklings like you, huh? If that's the case, I wouldn't mind becoming king and running the show down here. Bardock responded by saying, Don't talk to my son like that, Nappa. As if I'd let an idiot like you run around causing trouble around these parts. This is my turf, so get your ass back in line or I'll have to beat you into it. Ha! I'd like to see you try, low-class scum! The battle starts as Bardock and Nappa clash in mid-air. Raditz watches on in despair. The shockwaves cause ripples in the bloody pond as the older Saiyans exchange blows. Bardock grits his teeth. Although he has been getting stronger lately, he doesn't know if he's enough to surpass Nappa. Bardock was agile and experienced. Nappa used his size and strength to thrash Bardock without giving him a chance to breathe. If he had just been able to collect himself and get an opening, Bardock was sure he'd be able to bring down this behemoth. Bardock dashes forward with a swift uppercut, but Nappa sidesteps it, immediately countering with a shoulder tackle, followed by an elbow strike to the top of Bardock's head. Bardock's dazed as Nappa grabs him by the head 
and sends him crashing down to the rocky terrain beneath them. Bardock was incredibly hurt, Nappa held him up by the head, laughing all the while. Raditz could only stand there and watch. He wanted to move and fight with his father, but his body refused to listen to him. Years of being beaten and taunted by his tormentors had caused Raditz to fear Nappa with every fiber of his being. Nappa looked at the terrified Raditz and grinned. He mocked him once again, telling him that his father was a weakling just like him. Looks like it ran in the family. Nappa wondered aloud what would have happened if he tried to kill this dead man. He started to crush Bardock's head as he howled in pain. Time froze for Raditz. He thought back to his training with his father, to the happiness he felt as his father reached out to him, to the determination of surpassing his limits, and finally, to the pride he felt to be the son of Bardock. Raditz clenched his fist and he yelled out, Let my father go, you buffoon! As Nappa turned around, his face met Raditz's knee, and he was sent spiraling out, skipping across the bloody pond, before crashing into a boulder. Raditz told his father, Father, I... I'm sorry. I'm sorry for being so scared. I promise I won't be a coward anymore. I'll show this moron what it means to be a proud Saiyan warrior. Heh, <laughs> I knew you had it in you, son. Now, let's show that punk what true Saiyan grit is. The two Saiyans rushed to Nappa as he attempted to stand back up from the rubble. He tried to defend himself to the best of his ability, but he was unable to retaliate against this overwhelming onslaught. Every time he blocked a punch, he'd be met with a kick or elbow from the other. Nappa was furious. He couldn't believe in his wildest dreams that his favorite punching bag, Raditz, would be dominating this fight. Uh, impossible! How could I, the mighty Nappa, be losing to this low-class trash? I refuse to be beaten again! Can you take on this attack? Nappa bulked up as he roared, his rising key pushing back Raditz and Bardock. He was preparing his deadliest technique, the mighty Brick Cannon. A thundercloud boomed in the distance as Nappa continued to charge his attack. Raditz looked at his father, and they both smiled. They knew what they needed to do. The two figures launched themselves on Nappa. Before Nappa could register what was happening, Raditz punched the brute in his gut. Bardock immediately appeared behind Nappa and locked him in a chokehold. Raditz continued to unleash a flurry of blows onto Nappa's stomach, as each punch sent waves of pain through his body. Raditz yelled at Nappa, asking him if he still thought he was weak now. Raditz grabbed his clenched fist and roared releasing a powerful punch onto Nappa's face. Bardock released him, before Raditz kicked him up to the air. Bardock flew right after Nappa, and punched him into the air again, and leaping over behind, to knee him even further up. Finally, Bardock flies above his opponent, and launches a double axe handle, down towards Nappa, as Raditz blasts up from the ground, uppercutting him in the chest. The sound of the impact seemingly echoed across the afterlife. Nappa plummered down to hell, as he landed in the bloody pond. The father and son final revenger, was far too much for him to handle. Before losing consciousness, Nappa cursed the Raditz and his family, even his little brother too. Barda congratulates his son on his hard-earned win, as Raditz tells him that he wouldn't have been able to get this far without him. Barda chuckles, but winces in pain. Don't just thank me, thank your brother too. And thank yourself for putting in the hard work. Now let's wake up Gaz and Mez. We need to take Nappa somewhere where he can cool off for a while. Raditz and Bardock find goes on mess, and watch the father and son duo defeat Nappa. They thank them for their efforts, as they ask the two to help escort him to Hell Jail. Raditz was the one to beat Nappa into his jail cell. He cursed at Raditz and Bardock, vowing that he'll have his revenge for the whole family one day, along with that traitor Vegeta. Bardock laughed as he told Nappa that he'd be more than happy to take him on a rematch someday. He better start training now though, if he hoped to stand a chance against him or his sons. As he left, Raditz noticed that Nappa had begun to do push-ups in the cell. Looks like Bardock's challenge made an impact on him. Who knew? Shortly after apprehending Nappa, Raditz was awarded for his efforts and being granted the same position of Protector of Hell as his father, though below him. King Yama granted Raditz the title himself, and even forgave him for stealing one of his sacred fruits. Raditz laughed nervously. He now stood alongside his father as warriors of fire and brimstone, defenders of the underworld. As time went on, Raditz and Bardock's powers grew exponentially as their training continued, and grew in intensity. They would also patrol different sections of Hell, along with checking up on Nappa in Hell's Jail. It consistently challenged them to battle, which did me more than happy to oblige to. Not only did they notice that Nappa was becoming stronger as well, his behavior was also starting to mellow out. The Oni guards even told the pair that Nappa was becoming a model prisoner, focused solely on training. Give a few hundred years or so, and he might be eligible for parole. Several weeks after the fight against against Nappa, Raditz and Bardock were on their daily patrol when they received a telepathic call from King Kai. 
He was panicking and erratic at first, so Bardock asked him to calm down. He informed the pair that Goku and his friends had arrived on planet Namek to find the Dragon Balls in order to revive their fallen comrades. However, they ran into a major problem. Frieza and the rest of his elites. Raditz and Bardock were in complete disbelief. Out of everyone Kakarot could have encountered in the universe, it had to be Frieza? King Kai told them that Goku and his allies have actually been able to handle themselves quite well. In fact, not only were they able to take out Zarbon and Dodoria, but they also wiped out the Ginyu Force. If Raditz and Bardock weren't shook before, they were now. Just how much powerful had Kakarot become since their last time? Bardock looked up at the red skies as he thought to himself, Kakarot. Could he be the legendary Super Saiyan born in 1000 years? Was this possible? King Kai remembers why he called them in the first place. He wanted to test his students' abilities. So he made a request to King Yama in order to bring several members of the deceased Ginyu Force to his planet. That way he'd be able to properly test his students. However, during the transfer, the Ginyu Force had escaped hell. Not only that, but they broke out a terrifying being from hell's jail. A powerful, horrible soul that had been trapped in there for hundreds of years. They were now causing trouble at the checkout station. Bardock and Raditz had already been training at King Kai's for a little bit now, and they actually met Tien, Yamcha, Chiaotzu, and Piccolo. They got quite a bit of training there, even though they weren't trusted at first, especially Piccolo and Raditz. They really went at each other, but this only made them stronger. Bardock sighed before looking at the nervous Raditz. Sure, they had made enormous gains over the past few months, but were they at the level they needed to be? While he was alive, Bardock wouldn't have been able to handle Dodoria, let alone the Ginyu Force. Bardock put a hand on his son's shoulder and smiled. After everything they had been through, he knew that they were ready. Raditz smiled brightly as Bardock told King Kai that they were on their way. The pair gained clearance from the Oni to fly up, Breaking through the clouds and entering Snake Way. Just why did the Ginyu Force attack? Who was this mysterious warrior? And if what King Kai told them was true, then would his new students be able to help them out? Neither Bardock nor Raditz were sure. They just hoped that Kakarot was doing well for himself on Namek. The two sped off towards the check-in station. If you want to see more stuff like this, be sure to share, leave a like, and a comment. That really helps me out a lot. This video was done ahead of time, so I'm sorry if you became a member in the time between me making this video and it being up on YouTube. Shout out to the Super Saiyan Legend and Super Saiyan God members of the channel. Brian Skidmore, Hannah Rowan, Mateo is Lost, Cage, Sacred Saiyan, Neo Whitcomb, Sith Lord, Darko Roktonsky, Jin1412, Obi-Wan Fun, Midnight Combatant, Fox Die. Eric Dragon, The Real Samuel Randall, Anthony Notes, and Zachary Croy. Thanks so much for your support, guys. This channel would just not be around without you all. If you want to know how to get your name shouted out in the next video, be sure to click the join button down below. Also, I gotta say thank you to Professor Chimp for writing this video. We spitballed a lot of ideas back and forth, but this was mostly his doing. It's a lot of help because I'm actually not at home and able to make videos right now, so all the videos you're seeing through the month of June were pretty much all done ahead of time. Don't forget to come back on Saturday, because the next part of What If Bardock Met Goku in Hell will be up. I'm excited to see how Bardock and Raditz will deal with the Ginyu Force. Anyways guys, I really hope you enjoyed and until we meet again, see ya! Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to Smugstick, unless you want to be destroyed. Lord Beerus, that's hardly fair. But also, don't forget to click the bell icon to get notified when he uploads new videos.